Hey everybody, it's Christy with Christy Cole Artistry. Thank you for joining me tonight. Before I begin tonight's um, larger painting, I wanted to show you the dried results of the 16 inch round. It is dry now, and look at how pretty this came out. So if I turn it around, you can kind of see how the gold shimmers throughout and the deep purple came out just beautiful. So this one will get a th uh, get three coats of the Liquitex Professionals High Gloss Varnish and then that one will be um, done and up, put up on Etsy. Um, I haven't had time to get some of the ones that we recently did up on Etsy. I hope I will I'm hoping to get to those sometime this week. If there isn't uh, anyone's interested in one of the paintings from a previous video, you can always email me and um, I can um, give you all the details on the painting and so on and so forth. So tonight, again, an 18 by 24 canvas, and I'm going to run it horizontally because what I'm planning on doing tonight is I'm going to do a white background, black in the center, with um, iridescent white as an accent along with my copper and my 24 karat gold. So I want to be able to have enough white space around the blowout so that um, we sort of have a center design tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and get the canvas prepped with the white and the black. Then I'm going to bring you down and we'll get started for tonight. So thank you for joining me and I'll be right back. So here's our 18 by 24 canvas. Um, I do have a correction to my colors. Um, if you watched one of my last videos, I used a blue-black indigo, and I had used up all my black making that. So I actually am not doing a black and white split. I'm doing a white and blue-black indigo. When this dries, it's going to look black. Um, but I just wanted to be clear because while it's wet, it does look blue. So, I've got the colors on, I've got my white, I've got my um, blue-black indigo spot, and I'm going to torch the bubbles now. And we torch the bubbles, of course, because if we um, don't, the bubbles may pop and cause pinhole, whoop, that was my wrong white, pinholes on our canvas. And we do not want little pinholes on our canvas while we're, while we are um, allowing it to dry. I just realized I grabbed the wrong white bottle when I fix that side. I grabbed my iridescent and I didn't mean to, so I need to fix that because I don't think the, the iridescent is going to go that high and I don't want the two different colors showing. So I'm just going to quickly fix that. Alright, too many bottles here. So let's move that one over there and that one over there. Our bubbles pops up, so we'll take care of those while we're doing that. Okay, so again, my black is a blue-black indigo. It is in, I mixed it up, um, in my Artist Loft black bottle. Um, and I, I was going for a kind of a navy blue, but um, I had put the blues into what I had left in the black, which really wasn't that much, but it still um, comes out this beautiful blue-black indigo, but it does dry looking black. Okay, so my colors again for tonight are Deco Art Extreme Sheen 24 karat metallic gold and Liquitex Basics Copper, because I ran out of my Deco Art, and then I have my um, Liquitex Basics Iridescent White that I'm going to add sparingly. Now I thought maybe I should put in, you know, an ultramarine or a aqua or even blue permanent but I don't know I'm thinking 
maybe just metallics tonight. See, that's what I was thinking. So I think I'll put the metallics on first, and then if it looks like it's missing something, then I might add some of the light blue permanent. We'll see. Okay. As you can tell, I do all this stuff on the fly. Um, I know, I kind of know what my color palette's going to be, and then when I look at it, like, you know, when I get this ready, then I always think, oh, maybe I should add another color. That's just me. Okay. Let's start with our copper. I have my blue black indigo there and I'm going to be blowing this out along here so where do I want my copper to go because I still want to maintain a little bit of a center okay I think I'm actually going to go then in the center like so and then because I do want this to be little creative. Okay, now I'm going to put in just a little bit of the iridescent white. And I'm only going to put it, like I said, in the in the blue here. Um, or in the, in where the center is. And that will help separate my gold, copper, and silver as well. And then lastly, the gold. Gold kind of takes over, so I have to be careful with the gold. Because we definitely don't want gold just taking over all of the other colors. Look at a clog in there. Like that. Just let's see, I'm already getting too much gold in here, I think. Which leads me to believe I need to put in some of the blue. So I'm gonna put blue in. In the bottle and it sounded like a, a monkey or something. Oh, this is that bottle. This is this crazy bottle. So out of all these bottles I bought, I have this one that I don't know, it's like the hole is smaller and I've tried to make it bigger several times, um, but it's like it just keeps going back to small. So I might just have to cut the tip off. But then I got the problem that if I cut the tip off, it may just shoot everywhere. That won't be good either. So, all right, I am gonna put some blue in. I may not like it. Whoa, there we go. I may not like it afterward, but like I said, I like to create, I like to experiment. I like to play around with the colors and the paint, find what works, find what doesn't. I'm here to entertain you. Okay, time to blow to burst some bubbles. So again, I'm touching the bubbles to make sure that we don't end up with pinholes under the colors. And I see we've got what looks like a bubble or a glob. It's a bubble. Good. All right. So that looks interesting. Now, I could, to keep this shape, you know, this oddity here. I could just tilt it around, but I think I really want to, like I said, I want to blow it out and see what happens. And if it doesn't look good, all we're going to do is um, scrape it so it's not a big deal. And if I scrape it, I'll scrape it all into a cup and we'll use that on another painting. So um, I am going to use my Revlon. I'm going to like I said, I'm going to blow this up. I think I'm going to stretch it first. I'm looking at it and I, th I honestly think I need to stretch it a little bit first. So we are going to tilt a little bit. I'm just going to tilt it up this way a little bit, see what happens. Just slowly, slowly, slowly. Okay. Yep, I lost my 
a drink, so I need to get this back up where I had it on the popsicle sticks. There we go. Okay. It looks like some sort of jelly monster. Okay. So, when I was tilting that, I noticed here that the paint is missing along here. I dabbed, but it still came off of there, so I'm going to do that. Okay. All right. back a little bit. Yeah, I do. I'm going to bring this back just a little bit. I blew it a little bit too far that direction, so that's why I'm just going to tuck it back a little bit and see what happens. So from your angle, because I wanted to see what it looked like from your side, so from your side, I, I see the same thing as this should have been blown a little bit this way. So I'm going to try to separate this and blow this a little bit this way. And then I want to take this little bit out here. But otherwise, it looks really cool from my side. I hope it looks as interesting to you on your side as I see that it does. So there, we're just going to take and put this back a little bit like so, and then fill in the white, like so, and that'll settle itself down in a second, and then I want to separate this, I, I, I don't like how close I got that, so I'm just going to take, I take these little sponge brushes, and I just take the area that I want to move, try to do my best to suck up the paint, you might say. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, as you can see. It depends on how much separation I am trying to get. And here I'm trying to get into a very tiny spot with a big brush. But it is my smallest foam, foamy that I have. Okay, so that's good. Just keep sucking up the paint and dabbing it out like so, and then push this down, and we'll, we'll blow it, you know, make it so that it looks more natural than just these separations here. There, okay, so that looks good. Now I'll fill in with white, and by filling it in kind of heavy, it'll keep that from pushing back this way, and I'm going to blow this this way a little bit. Here we go again. I love the blue through here. I'm glad I put the blue in. And the cells that are happening from the um, copper and the gold. And the iridescent white is helping a little bit. I didn't want this to be too, um, too bright. I do want it to be a little bit dark dramatic, not bright dramatic. So again, I am just sucking up just some of the paint between these two. And then I'll add some white in there too, just to keep these a little bit separate. Okay. 
because as you know, this paint is fluid and fluid moves, right? There. I almost grabbed the iridescent white again. Oh my goodness. If we had iridescent white in this whole section, it would look so silly. So we're just going to add the white here. Let it naturally flow. Um, love all this. This is beautiful now. This I like. I think I'd like a little bit more separation in here. And I'm, I'm going to come around and look from your side so I can see what you're seeing. What do you think? You think like right in here there should be a little more separation? I think so. Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to check that. And then I see that this is rolling over the side. I don't want that rolling over the side. I don't want any of them to go over the side, so I'm going to watch them. And I'm going to pull this back and fix it. Okay, so I think that I do need some white in here. So again, literally just pulling the paint out with the sponge brush, like so, to make separation. Okay, like that. And then it's, it still needs to look natural along here. So we need to kind of correct that, like so. And then, ooh, I have to check again. And then add the white. Okay, and then I have this little spot there I don't like. There. That's better. Yeah, that's better. Okay, have the white in there, have the white in there. Now I do, I'm going to blow, I'm going to torch again because I do see that I'm making bubbles in here. And again, I just want to do a little bit in here too. Maybe not as dramatic, just a little bit, like so. So then, after I get this part done, like so, then it should look a little more natural of a blowout, like so. I hope that makes sense to you all. Okay, so then we're gonna, there we go. We'll tuck that in. So now I've got that color corrected. Bring that back, and then I'm just gonna color correct right there. And then we're gonna add the white. So I didn't go as deep. At least it doesn't look as if I went as deep this time on this one. Um, but I just wanted to give it sort of a, there. Sort of a separation. So we've got that. Now, if you noticed, I did drip right here. So I'm going to take my little skier and I'm going to poke it here and here to clean both of those up and here and here. And then I've got this little section right here that I'm also going to fix. All right. So I hope you guys like that. Um, these are still moving around. This I love. This is good. Um, like I said, this went over the edge, so I want to correct that. So I'm going to work on that for a minute, and then I'll bring you down and I'll show you the painting. I'll be right back. So here is the painting for tonight, and I am so happy that I added that blue. I know this would have been copper gold or the iridescent white, which would have been fine too, but I like when there's an accent in the painting, so I'm glad I added the lighter blue. Now I'm going to take you down and show you a couple things here. So first of all, I'm going to show you that these edges right here and here, as you can see, the paint got really close to the edge. So what I've done is I've let the paint that's here just naturally flow and will let that sit until after the um, colors start to dry. And then I will add just a hair more white to fill in right here, and it will all blend in just fine. Now over here, I had the same thing. I don't want this petal to go over the edge, so I'm going to watch this. And if I need to, I will pull it back again. See, it's starting to go over. I'm going to pull it back again, and then I will add white to the edge again once that settles. And then one last spot is right here where this petal had gone over the side and I didn't want it to. So I've pulled it back, and I've added some white just to the edge, and I'm watching it. And if it continues to 
close this little gap here and try to go over the edge, I'll stop it and um, pull it back again. So let's look at the cells. So the cells that were created using the blue-black indigo as the background, which as you can see still looks blue. Now when this dries, it will probably, like it did with the other painting, will dry very um, dark and almost look black. But right now it does look blue. And with the copper and the gold and the light blue in there, I absolutely love it. So let's look around. All the cells, there are some crazy cells in the gold here. Look like little gold nuggets. And then there's some cells popping through the blue, black, indigo, and the blue that was drugged by um, blowing this out. Really looks pretty. Love the section right here where the lighter blue and the copper have mixed and made the cells in the blue, black, indigo. Really cool. Here's the other petal that we separated. So here's the separation. And see, it looks just fine. And then going up here, there are some... And all I did with this one is do the separation just in this section. I didn't touch any of this, and this looks really neat. There's like a, a outline of copper and gold in here. And then we'll go down here, and this will bring us back to the center. And then we've got this crazy copper stuff going on right here with the blue. And then this is the petal that I pulled back from the edge. And there's some, the iridescent white is in here. There's some blue, black, indigo popping through here now. And then this is the, the last petal that I showed you that I pulled back. And look at this. This is really cool what's going on all in this section here. I'd like to pull up a little bit more of this and see what I get underneath there. But I'm, I'm too busy watching the edges of the painting right now. So this is what it looks like right now. And again, it'll change as the paints pop through and then start to settle down and dry. But right now, I think this is really cool. I'm so glad that I decided to do the kind of, it, was, it wasn't a center pour, it was actually down here, and then moved it out. I really like it. So let me know what you think in the comments. Do you like the color palette? Do you like the fact that I added the lighter blue? Um, was there a different color you were thinking that I should have added? Let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll try it again. So thank you for watching my videos. Um, again, this is Christy with Christy Cole Artistry. And until my next video in three days, please take care of yourselves and each other. Bye. And I decided to come back because one thing I forgot to tell you is I take my, I have these little barbecue skewers. And I also have different size popsicle sticks and um, I use these because you need to scrape the underneath of the canvas while it's drying so that it does not keep pulling those areas that I showed you that were falling off the canvas. If you don't scrape the, the um, underneath of, of your canvas, that can get pulled down by having the white or whatever your flood color is. Um, running over the edge. So you want to pull, not only pull your painting back if you need to, but you also need to scrape the edges so it will stop pulling it down off of the canvas. So I just thought I'd bring you back for that. And then um, my contact information will be at the end of the video. And I also have um, all of my contact information in the description of my videos. Um, so I wanted to tell you that. And then if you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comments or go ahead and email me at ccoleartistry, and it's just one word, at gmail.com. Because that's an easy way to get a hold of me directly. So um, until my next video again, thank you for joining me, and I do appreciate all of you for watching my videos. Bye for now.